All right, hey VC, I'm Jamie. Welcome back. We're back with another video, and this time we're back with the CD and uh, 45 fine. So uh, let's get right to it. Yes, I did pick up the latest uh, Yes album. This is uh, Mirrors to the Sky, and uh, this is the uh, double CD, and of course the album, and then the bonus tracks. And I think the band Yes have really done an excellent job in terms of upselling with bonus tracks, because, you know, sucker for bonus tracks and like the extra music. And it's interesting, the bonus uh, material is, a, is three songs, but it's at least 15 minutes long, so it's not too, too bad in terms of bonus tracks without getting into alternate mixes and all of that thing. The only uh, issue I have or question as I have is when you've got the, the main album and then the bonus tracks on a separate disc, uh, they would have fit on this disc. There would have been plenty of time just to put the bonus tracks on a single disc. I don't know if that's more of a manufacturing thing where they can print this and then just make you know extra copies of that, but that's my only quibble. Much, much better than uh, I think their past uh, several albums. I think it started to feel a bit too much like Yes Light to me. This does a much better job. This is a lot more proggy uh, in sound. Uh, let's open it up, take a look inside, and uh, I seem to have issue. I like the way this is all laid out, and it's very nice to have the booklet in there, but it seems like every time I open this, this book wants to go flying out. So here we have the the current lineup of the band, of course now uh, technically featuring no original members, as Steve Howe uh, joined them for the second album, so Steve Howe is certainly the longtime member, and it's pretty much uh, you know Steve Howe uh, directing this band, but you've got uh, John Davison, uh, lead vocals, and of course then you've got uh, Jeff Downs and Billy Sherwood, Sherwood, they were, whoops, Billy Sherwood replacing uh, Chris Squire, and then you have uh, Jay uh, Sheelan or Schellen, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, uh, officially taking over for Alan White. Very nice that they've dedicated this album to uh, Alan White, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, the fantastic uh, artwork of Roger Dean, and I just saved the uh, hype sticker on the inside like that, and this is, in fact, their 24th uh, studio album. So this is also available in like a big kind of uh, art book uh, as well. And you get all the, the lyrics there. But yeah, they, I, I really think this is a much better album, in my opinion, than the past several albums. Uh, much more proggy. Uh, they seem, seem to still uh, very much uh, like uh, orchestration in a number of the uh, tracks, but uh, much, much better album. Uh, if you're a Yes fan, I think you will definitely uh, enjoy it. So that is the latest from Yes. And again, just love that Roger Dean artwork. Okay, trying to keep up with all of the uh, Neil Young uh, bootleg uh, releases, of which there are many. Uh, I didn't have this one until now. This is Somewhere Under the Rainbow, a great uh, title for this one. Uh, Neil Young and the Santa Monica Flyers from November 5th, 1973. So this is around the album uh, Tonight's the Night. So this really has a dark feel to it. Uh, performed live at the Rainbow uh, in the UK. And uh, Bruce Berry, who was a roadie for uh, CSNY, who had uh, died succumbing to a heroin heroin overdose and then also uh, Crazy Horse uh, member uh, Danny Witten, who had died uh, from a heroin overdose and then uh, Neil Young creating the album Tonight's the Night and uh, this um he performs it pretty much like in terms of all the all the uh, current tracks or new tracks from tonight's night. Just a handful of uh, songs in terms of the hits. He does uh, he does the uh, Buffalo Springfield tune. Uh, Flying on the ground is wrong. Uh, it's just kind of like a solo acoustic thing. He also does Helpless on this one. Now apparently uh, he and members of the band got quite intoxicated uh, through the recording of this. There's a little write up uh, inside of this, uh, which is a little bit hard to read that uh, kind of talks about uh, this concert and what Neil was Neil and the band were going through at the time. So some of the songs do get a little slow or, be, you know, kind of feel like they're really dragging on. But uh, and also keep in mind uh, with the bootleg series, uh, some of the concerts in this bootleg series are really quite well recorded, either soundboard recordings or generally quite good. This is definitely a bootleg quality uh, recording. But, uh, you know, if you enjoy Neil Young and uh, this is quite an excursion, it's in terms of the darkness of this concert. Um, still a very appreciative audience, but uh, yeah, really enjoyed this one. Okay, and I picked this up on kind of like a recommendation recommendation from uh, JT's uh, music room, uh, JT in the uh, vinyl community. He had picked up one of the vinyl uh, albums of, of, from this uh, duo, Beaver and Krause, and I didn't know very much about uh, this uh, duo. They were sort of um, kind of on the forefront of uh, synthesizer, uh, Moog synthesizer uh, stuff, uh, so they released three albums, and so this is a double CD that uh, spotlights the three albums in, in a wild sanctuary, uh, Gandharva, and uh, all 
good men. And I really enjoyed this. It's uh, Again, it's it's predominantly instrumental, but with also soundtracks, uh, some spoken word. It's kind of, I don't want to say all over the place, but it is very, very interesting. And uh, Beaver and Krauss worked with a number of uh, great musicians, including, of course, according to the write-up, the Beach Boys, the Birds, the Doors, George Harrison, uh, Harry Nielsen, Quincy Jones, uh, Leon Russell, Phil Spector, uh, to name a few, Simon and Garfunkel. So uh, I like the one right up here that kind of captures the whole thing. It really is environmental expressions recorded with Moog synthesizer. So uh, there you go. So this is, yeah, double CD. I don't know. It's kind of a strange uh, cover for this, um, but those are the three albums there that they released. I think they only released the three albums through their career. Maybe I should take that out so you can see that a little bit better without the plastic glare. So there are the three albums there. And they've got all this kind of weird stuff all over the place. And just a pretty straightforward booklet that just write ups on the album like that. And then uh, the discs housed like that. And then like that. Okay. All right, so there's that. And I picked up uh, some CDs at uh, a recent library sale uh, from just out of town. So these were almost, and everything at this uh, sale was uh, pretty much by donation only. Like you didn't, they didn't have set prices on things. So that was pretty nice. Uh, real laid back uh, blues uh, artist, uh, Mose uh, Scarlet. And this is uh, his album, Precious Seconds. And it's real, almost kind of Leon Redbone, really laid back stuff. But the artists that he uh, works with or performs on here with include uh, Amos Garrett, Jeff Healy, Colin Linden, great uh, Canadian uh, blues artist, and David Wilcox is also a featured on here. Again, just really laid back, uh, kind of acoustic blues kind of thing, sort of, you know, what you see is what you get, but uh, did enjoy that. That was a pleasant surprise. Also at this uh, library sale, they had The Cure and uh, the album Wish, and of course this has the big hit uh, Friday, Friday I'm in Love. Okay, so there's that. Uh, this one, uh, Talk Talk, and this is uh, History Revisited. So I'm not usually a big fan of uh, remixes and whatnot, but I did enjoy this. So this is kind of uh, remixes on a lot of their hits, uh, you know, kind of most of the... Uh, uh, catalog there and the, the nice thing is is that the remixes sort of alternate takes but they're not like super long kind of dance mixes or anything like that but uh, that was a pleasant surprise to pick that one up also at the library sale at Majure and the album is uh, Answers to Nothing of course the uh, title track and the song Dear God which I uh, Big fan of Midjure and uh, happy to pick that up. Uh, also a pleasant surprise, I came across uh, this. This is a soundtrack uh, to a film I have not seen, but uh, certainly familiar with the artist uh, Yusa Denur. And this is music from the motion picture, I Bring What I Love. And uh, yes, yeah, so very happy to pick that up. And just his absolutely incredible vocals. Uh, of course, if you're not familiar with this artist, uh, uh, he's recorded with Peter Gabriel. All right, and uh, one more uh, CD. I picked this up uh, not at the library sale, but at a th uh, area thrift shop. I didn't even know this album existed. This is Aretha Franklin and the album What You See Is What You Sweat. <laughs> and this is an 80s album. And at first, in terms of the cover, I thought maybe this is kind of like a budget compilation or something like that. But no, this album came out in the 80s on Arista. And uh, it, the first track is a cover of Sly and the Family Stone's Everyday People. And it's got enough of the 80s gloss uh, going on with this album but still it's 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 a good record and uh she does do a duet with uh, luther vandross on this album but there's uh, it's a it's a it's a worthwhile album if you come across this one uh definitely pick it up especially if you're an aretha franklin fan but as i say an 80s aretha franklin album i didn't even know existed Some great pictures there there you go Okay, and uh, from that, now let's go to some unusual uh, uh, seven inch singles or 45s that I picked up and these were all uh, picked up and there's not too many here uh, that were picked up at the uh, library uh, book sale. Here is a rare Canadian single. I didn't know anything about this group. Picked it up because it looked interesting you know in its uh, original sleeve. This is D and the Yeoman. Uh, so this is a Canadian band. It features uh, D uh, who was originally I think from the UK and had worked uh, alongside 
did the Beatles and Jerry and the Pacemakers. Now here on this write-up it says, uh, worked with uh, or played with the Beatles and Jerry and the Pacemakers, uh, and they spell Jerry wrong <laughs> with a J instead of a G, uh, and, and before they were famous. But uh, doing a little bit more research, there's not a lot of information about this band, but this uh, D fellow, and I don't have a last name for D, uh, worked, was playing in, in Hamburg, Germany. So when the Beatles who were playing there or possibly Jerry and the Pacemakers and they would have been playing on the same bill or at a lot of the same uh, venues as the Beatles, uh, of course, before they were famous in Hamburg, Germany. So that's what that refers to. And this really has that sort of, uh, you know, early 60s kind of Beatles, Jerry and the Pacemakers sound. And uh, the songs featured on here are Say Baby, Who Am I? And uh, You Should Know It. And on the Wolf with a double F uh, label. So somebody like uh, Daryl off the beaten tracks, I know he often uh, finds some really interesting Canadian stuff. I think he would be uh, quite interested in that one. Okay, another 45s include Elton John, Island Girl, but the B-side is a song called Sugar on the Floor. It's just straight to uh, Elton and piano, and it's a song that was written by Kiki D. And I, th I didn't know he actually did any uh, songs, like in terms of Kiki D songs, other than... Elton John, Bernie Toppin sort of thing. So it was a, that was a, an inter interesting uh, surprise. Uh, Union Gap, this is one of those uh, sort of reissue uh, singles that sort of, you know, celebrate Hall of Fame or Golden Oldies. So this is a, a double hit. This is uh, The Union Gap, not Gary, does listed as Gary Puckett in The Union Gap, but The Union Gap, Young Girl and Woman Woman. And uh, just one more. Uh, we've got, of course, uh, Al Stewart and Time Passages with the song Almost Lucy on the flip. Okay, that's uh, going to do it uh, for this one. Uh, thanks so much uh, for dropping by. Um, Vinyl Finds videos are going to be forthcoming. Uh, it's been about a good month since my last Vinyl Finds video, and I've got a lot of records I'm going to be showing, so <laughs> you can stay tuned for that. That might be have to be a couple of, of different parts. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it in all in one video without it being too, too long. So again, uh, do take care. Hopefully everybody's doing well, and we'll chat again soon. Bye-bye.